Hello, this is Andrew with Missing Remote. In this video, we're going to talk about LAN firewall rules for Unify gateways, which are USGs and UDM and UDM Pro, USG Pro, all that with a using the Unify controller to set all that up and, and manage it. The There are three different types of firewall rules for Unify devices, LAN in, LAN out, and LAN local. The documentation around this, while it, it is right, can be a little bit difficult to understand what these things actually do and why you would want to use them. Uh, LAN in is traffic that is coming from a LAN network into another LAN network. So you're blocking it or allowing it or doing whatever as it comes in from another LAN network. LAN out is the opposite of that. So you're blocking traffic from one LAN network to another LAN network as it leaves the LAN network. And LAN local is traffic that is within a network, within a specific LAN network. And when I say LAN network, I mean a corporate LAN and not a guest because guests have their own set of rules. But what you can do is use some of these LAN rules to create something like a guest network. And that, that's what I have here with the isolation group or isolation rule. So generally, I would say it's better to use groups for all of these things, but I haven't in this case for reasons that are outside this, the scope of this video. If you wanted to, or it would be better to use a group to define, so you see here I have block isolation, block semi-trust, some rules that allow the printer access, allow DNS access, block IoT, block DMZ. It would be better if I created two groups for these rules. One that encapsulates this group and one that encapsulates this group. Because the reason why I have them set up this way is that they get executed in order starting at the very top as a packet comes in it works its way through this IP tables stack and if it gets all the way to the bottom then basically everything's accepted. You can order these rules by dragging by selecting this little multi-directional thing and dragging them around that's how you, how you change the uh, order of them. But as I mentioned before I, I usually use groups for this kind of thing so like this is that rule on my UDM Pro network where I just have a block restricted lands to other subnets where I have a group that defines all of the block networks and a group that defines all of the private IP that can exist within a network and just have one rule that encapsulates almost everything almost all of what this does in one rule although but I don't have it I don't have this the allow DNS and allow printer rule so I just have all of those other networks grouped into one Generally, you're going to use LAN in rules. You're not going to use these other rules, these other types of rules. But there are some scenarios where you might. One of those scenarios is if you have a guest network, but then you want to create something that operates similar to a guest network, but that isn't a guest network. By default, guest networks have isolation on them. Uh, but if you set up a captive portal guest network, then every guest network uses that captive portal where in this scenario I want a network that works like a guest network but doesn't use the captive portal so it works it, it uses standard WPA2 authentication in order to you know get established on the network and that's this isolation network and in that scenario because I don't want to allow traffic from different client devices on this network I would use a LAN local rule to drop traffic between the devices on this network. And that's what this rule here does. But because I need to allow devices on the isolation network to talk to the DNS server, which is on the same network, but is not hosted on the USG. So if I didn't have this rule here, and you notice I use a group, so I just if I want to allow other devices like a printer on the same network or I don't know any other device if there's one device one client device that every device every client device on this isolation network should be able to communicate with 
I would just add it to that group and it would get fall into this this rule once it provisions to the USG. So that that's how you why you would use a land local, but generally you you wouldn't use these. They're not, it's kind of uncommon. So let's dig in a little bit on one of these land in rules. So we'll just take the um, the IoT one. Not that it really matters. They're all pretty much the same. And how you would write one of these. So you you would just give it a name. You want to make sure that it's on. You've dropped because that's the behavior that you want to happen. And then you have a network, and this pulls from the list of networks that are defined on over here in the networks tab. And so for this, we have our IoT network, and we want to block all traffic from it to any client device that has a private that's in, within the private LAN space, which is you know in most cases the 192.168. Dot x and th this is defined in RFC 1918 which is why I called it the RFC 1918 private IPs group and w once you have this defined then it would basically block any traffic from this network onto any other network that you could possibly define in in uh, on the unified because you can't define networks that aren't in that private IP space what you need to do in order to allow traffic that is response traffic from the devices on that IoT network is to have this rule, the allow establish related traffic rule. And it's an accept rule. And it, you know, all if it's established and related, which is basically response traffic. So for example, I have a home automation controller within this network and it has, it has hosts its own web server. What I don't want to allow is traffic, unsolicited traffic from that home automation controller to break outside of this LAN space that I've carved out for all these IoT devices. But what I need to do is be able to communicate with that web server that sits on top of, that sits on the home automation controller from any device. If I did not have this rule, when I hit that web server, the response traffic that came back, you know, to send back, like this is what the page looks like and, you know, all that other stuff, it would get blocked. And since this, that traffic was initiated from a device outside of the IoT LAN. It's okay because it's not being blocked in. And this rule allows the traffic, the response traffic, to come back out again. What's interesting here is that when we have, so I have a site to site VPN configured for this network and another network. This is the USG Pro side of the network. The other side uses a UDM Pro. And what's interesting is that rules for site-to-site -site VPN on the UDM aren't enforced at all. And I've been, I've been working with Ubiquity support on that, and they've confirmed that it's an issue. I have no idea when it's going to get fixed. So what they suggest, if you want to block traffic across your site-to-site -site VPN, you have to do it on the USG side for, in both cases. You cannot do it on a UDM Pro, which means that if you have two UDM Pros in your site-to-site -site VPN, you can't do it. Also interesting is that, and I, I don't think that it should work this way, but the support technician that I worked with said that it's supposed to, which is that I think that site-to-site -site lands should work just like any other LAN in regards to this allow established related traffic rule, but they don't. So if this rule, this allow established related traffic rule is above these, this block VPN traffic rule, it will never get enforced. It's probably also worth noting that I don't have it enabled right now. Uh, that's what that little check mark means. So it wouldn't get enforced anyway, but if I were to move this above the block VPN traffic, e even if the block VPN traffic was on, it wouldn't get enforced. And I think that that maybe it makes sense from a um, like a deeply technical implementation detail kind of perspective, because all traffic that moves across the, the, the VPN is established. It doesn't make sense from a usability perspective because land traffic is land traffic. Whether it's site to site or native, it should all work the same. So that's just something to deal with. Why do I have these disabled? The answer is so that I can show you how it works. Here we have a ping. This is a server that sits on the um, USG side and it's pinging a server that sits on the UDM Pro side, this 192.168.20 server 
is on the UDM Pro network. You can see up here that I'm already peed into a server that in this 10.0.1.5 space. And then I have on my workstation here, I have a ping going from the workstation to this remote server. So we're gonna see how that it works to turn that off. We are going to have a look at our block VPN traffic rule. Right now we can see that it's off. We wanna turn it on. But before we do that, let's just have a little look at what this is. So in this case, I have defined a set of local networks and a set of remote networks. The local networks are local to the gateway. So in this case, the local networks contain all of the networks that are defined here in this networks tab that I have exposed across the site to site VPN. The remote networks are all of the remote networks on the UDM Pro side that are exposed across the VPN. And here you can see I, I've used a group to define those because it's just easier to do it that way instead of having, in, in this case, I think I would need to have five different rules to do the same thing. So this is enabled, so we're gonna go ahead and save it. It'll say that rules are changing, are saving successfully. What that means is not that it's taken effect immediately. What it means is that it sent those rules to the gateway to get provisioned. So it'll actually take a little while to provision it. So we just need to wait. And while we wait, I'm just gonna open up the um, pings and we're just gonna see what happens. So here we can see now that we've lost our ability to communicate with that 10.0.1.5 server. So what happens now is what we wanna do is we wanna allow certain servers or certain machines to communicate with other machines across the VPN, but block everything else. So let's have a look. So we have an allow VPN traffic rule, which we wanna order above the block VPN traffic rule, where I've created a, a group which defines the VPN allowed local IPs and the VPN allowed remote IPs. So in this scenario, let's just look at those groups. This group is that server, so the 10.0.1.5 allowed local IPs, and the other is my server on the other side and the workstation that I am using to do the ping. If we go back to our rules and we enable this rule, which you know it, it basically is the, the reverse of the block rule, except all, and then we have our local IPs and our remote IPs. We save that. We can bring up our pings. This is probably gonna time out before we the rule gets turned on again. Let's see what happens. So here we can see that the rule that allows this workstation to communicate with that server is now in place. And what should happen here is this should come back online, but sometimes RDP doesn't work right in that way. So let's just cancel it and we will reconnect. It took a little while, but eventually got this thing to come back up. So if we look back through the ping here that we've had running, the while we couldn't connect to 10.0.1.5, it had no trouble communicating with 192.168.20. So if we wanna block the traffic that's coming from the USG Pro side of the VPN to the UDM Pro side of the VPN, we have to do it on the USG because the UDM Pro d won't enforce uh, VPN or firewall rules across the VPN right now. To do that, we use the LAN out rules. So we're gonna create a new rule and we'll just call it like it is. We wanna drop it. And in this case, we wanna block traffic from our remote network to our local networks. So basically reversing the LAN in rule because this is an out rule. So let's save this and then we'll just flip over to our RDP session while it, and wait for it to provision to the USG. And what should happen here is that we should no longer be able to ping the server on the 192.168.1.x subnet. So here we go. You can see that we've lost that. So to re-enable that traffic, we have to create another allow rule. Make sure you change this to accept. We want to allow our remote network we remote allowed IPs to talk to our local allowed IPs, save, and then we need to order it above the block rule. So let's go back to our ping and wait for it to provision. So here we can see it's coming back online. And if we connect back to our RDP session, we can see that that's coming back online true too. So in this scenario, now we have two sets of rules, both implemented on the USG, which 
block most of the traffic that comes across the VPN with certain pinholes pricked to allow specific machines to communicate with other specific machines. Now, in this case, I just did all traffic. You could, of course, get a lot more granular around what ports and protocols and all of that. But basically, it is exactly the same concept. You would just write your rule a little bit differently. So if I only wanted to allow RDP traffic, I would choose a protocol type and then go in here and, and find RDP. So that, that's pretty much all there is to it. So hopefully you found that useful. If you did, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, let me know, and um, I will get to them as soon as I can. Thanks.